How's everybody doing? It's all I hope. Um, how come y'all don't have blue cups? I always have my blue cup wherever I go. Y'all never have blue cups. I feel offended. Thank you, Freddie. Birthday to me. No. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, picking up where Freddie was. Leaving off there. Uh, a few weeks back, I don't know, maybe like four weeks back, I talked about um, talked about a lot of stuff, but I was basically talking about. Uh, I believe the key word I used most of that sermon, whatever, uh, was you're blessed. You're blessed. And with what Freddie was just saying, he basically kind of went over a lot of that again. You're here on the Sabbath day because you are blessed to know that that is the day, to know that God has something special that he made for man, and to know, as, as Freddie said, if you desire to choose it. And that's why he says it was made for man, not man for it. We don't fit into it neatly. We have to make up our mind to, to fit into it. And um, it's, it's really interesting stuff to hear and to, uh, to consider. And uh, over in Psalms 82, or maybe we should go to Psalms 22. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Psalms 82, where'd you go, Psalms? want to read one little verse there and, and and seriously most all y'all know your bible really well so you all know that you can you can find all kinds of places especially in the psalms that say this but in psalms 82 i just want to pull out um excuse me uh verse six it says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high and in what I said a few weeks back when I kept saying you were blessed, I'm not going to say that a whole bunch today. I may say it once or twice. But that is, again, the crux. You are blessed to know this. You're blessed to know about the Sabbath day. You're blessed. And you need to, uh, to take this blessing and use it. Use it to your benefit. Use it for God and for Christ. Skip over or back to uh, kind of confused. If I'm going to the front of the book, am I going back? <laughs> You're not answering me. Uh, but in Psalms 50, over in verse 5, and it says, Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. What sacrifice have you made? What covenant did you make in sacrifice an animal for God? You didn't, and I think you all know this. That sacrifice that we use to make the covenant with God is the sacrifice of Christ. That's what he's talking about there. And again, we know that. And we know that that is, means, all the scripture means that there is a reason for what we think and we believe and we do, and the, the scripture only talks to us about it. Not just us in this one church, but us that know to keep the Sabbath, to keep the holy days, and know to stay away from things that are not proper. It is a gift, and we, we know that. So we, again, I may end up saying it more than I wanted to, we're blessed. You're blessed. Um... Go over to Colossians 1.26. Yeah, I got a lot of scripture. I'll get there. 
Colossians 1, verse 26, and it says here, Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. And this again, this is talking about what has been made manifest to you. There are those, Freddie mentioned some of them, that read this Bible. They know about Christ. They know that he sacrificed himself for their sins. But they have no knowledge of the Sabbath other than it's a Jewish thing. They have no knowledge of holy days. They have knowledge of holidays and such. You have gotten something different. You have gotten something new. You have gotten something that changed you. And I'm not knocking who Freddie was talking about loving, because we do do that, and I do that every day. If I go drive my Uber, I guarantee you in the first hour, Uber's going to have me mad. And I will hate what I'm doing, and I will be saying, I, why am I doing this? What am I, have I lost my mind? I can't believe I'm out here doing this again. And then somebody will get in my car, and I'll go, hello, how are you? How's it going? And I'm very nice and cordial to them. And when I drop them off, I hate Uber again. But that's just me, and that's just the way Uber is. Uh, but... People come to Jesus, but they don't change. I came to Jesus, you came to Jesus, you had to change. If you were raised in a family that was keeping the Sabbath and the holy days, you had to learn to do what you do. You had to convince yourself still that what mom and dad had been teaching me is the truth. So there was still a, a conversion thing there going on with you. You had to change. You had to make conscious effort to be what, you, what God wants you to be, how he wants you to be. You had to work at it. You had to think about it. It wasn't just say something, repeat some guy's prayer, and carry on. And I'm sorry because some of this is going to sound like I'm bashing people out there to do Sunday, and I'm not. But I'm sorry. There's a common saying in this world, two wrongs do not make a right. So when I'm doing it wrong and I tell somebody else to meet Jesus and they go, oh, I love Jesus, and then I continue to show them to do it wrong, where's the right? There may still be something for them people, and I've shown you that before, and those called great and those called least. But seriously, when they do everything wrong, from the day, the Sabbath, the sign between God and his people, to the holidays and the leaving off of his holy days, which are so, so overwhelming and spectacular in what they show you about the whole story of Christ, the whole story of the world. And what we know, and we've talked about this before, we talked about it in Bible studies, we've talked about it, I'm pretty sure all three of us have talked up here about it and mentioned the fact that because we know what's coming, we fear not. We have a comfort we have a comfort. I'll say this while I'm on this right now. Again, I'm sorry. I'm not really trying to be mean. But truth is truth. If everybody gets this Holy Spirit when they believe in Jesus and pray to him and ask for their sins to be forgiven, but they don't get baptized and they don't really believe what they're supposed to believe and don't really do exactly what they're supposed to do, isn't the Spirit supposed to be the Spirit of truth? Isn't it the one that's supposed to make everything eye-opening to you, make you understand it? I don't think everybody gets the Holy Spirit unless they're trying to make an attempt to do what God has said, to try and live their life like he said, live your life for me. I gave you these ten simple commandments. They're not hard. We're living proof. If I can do it, one who hates, I've said this before, hates being told what to do. I love the book. I love finding things I got to do in here. But you know what? There's just a few things, simple things. Once you change and you get doing them, life is a breeze. And you don't worry about death. You don't worry about uh, <laughs> what these knuckleheads are going to do in this world. Are they going to nuke us all? What? So what? We, read, we sang the song. 
and death is the beginning. We know that. We understand that fully. I know other people that do the Sunday thing, I'll call it. But they fear death. And I don't want to die. I've said that too. I'm not ready to die. Story coming up. I'm not ready to die. But if I do die, I know what's going on. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm hoping for. And, and that's, that's what it's all about. Go over to 1 Peter 5. First Peter 5, verses 6 and 7. It says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Simple as that. And that's what we do. We humble ourselves before God, and we understand that he cares for us, and we cast our cares towards him, because we know he will help us. The Bible study last week, there was only a few of us here. We didn't get to... Uh, stream it because we had no tech guys here so uh, but the the whole thing we kind of got the conversation going about what God has done for you and I went over some things God has done for me recently um, and other people chimed in on some things and we talked about things that God had done for us in our past or in our coming into the truth and such like that you know uh, when I came into the truth a weight the size of the world was lifted off my shoulders. Uh, I was a very, very ornery person at the time, and I really cooled off a lot because I met Jesus and the Father. But uh, things happen, and it's on us to humble ourselves. It's on us to take these gifts, these Knowledge that we are given by Scripture, by God, by the Holy Spirit, and use them properly. Not abuse them, but use them properly. Turn over to 1 John. I won't go there now. going to be 1 John chapter 2. This is going to be one of my uh, backward readings. We're going to start in verse 7 and we're going to read to verse 1. And I, I just think it flows really well this way too. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had. From the beginning, the old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Now we go to 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought, to also, ought himself also to do, to walk even as he walked. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus the Christ, the righteous. All right. So, again, every now and then I like to read things backwards like that, because I think it flows even better sometimes and makes a little sense. But the thing here is, this is the way we have found to live by Scripture. This is what God has taught us through His Spirit, that this is the way to go through life in His commandments, living our life that way. And that's what we do. That's how it goes. And He's with us. In Daniel 7:18, we're called the saints of the Most High. 
and it says that we will inherit the kingdom forever and ever. In Romans 5, 8, it talks about how Christ died for us. Okay? Now, we just read how he died for all the sins of the world, and he did. Every person in this world, every person, I don't care what you've done wrong, who you are, he died for your sins if you will accept him and change. Repent doesn't mean go back to where you were. It goes back 180. It means go the other way. Change what you're doing and go that way. That's what repent means. And they don't understand that. They think repent means say I'm sorry and then move on and do what I want because I'm forgiven now. And I've actually had people tell me that, that they could sin all they wanted to because they got Christ and they're forgiven now. And that's how they live their life. Thinking that because they said a prayer and said I believe in Christ, now they're free to sin because they're covered. Weird. Makes no sense. Now, let's talk about life. Got up this yesterday morning and I went Ubering. And I Ubered for a while. And uh, I found myself in a lot of pain. I found myself having a hard time breathing. And then eventually the pain went down my left arm. And eventually it started in the middle of my back, right about behind here. And um, I didn't feel too good. So thought about going to the doctors, the ER, and y'all know me. I'm a little hard-headed, so it took a little bit of while of pain to get me to do it. But then again, I don't do things like that without my sidekick. And uh, I knew Ramona was getting ready to leave the house, and I called her and I said, hey, I might have to go to the hospital. I don't know what's going on. So she said, okay, I'll wait for you. And I said, yeah, I'm going to come home and get you. And uh, hospital's right from the house, really not too far. She could have met me there, probably the better way to go. But I said, no, I'll come home and get you. So I spent yesterday morning in the hospital with chest pain and stuff like that. Now, the good thing about it is all the tests came back okay. They're not really sure what was wrong with me. But I tell you what, I was hurting. It's happened to me before, but not as bad. Uh, so those, the last time it happened, I just pulled over and rested for a few minutes and then went home, and it was no big deal. Never had no more problem with it. But yesterday didn't really seem to want to go away. So after being stuck and poked and x-rayed and CT'd and everything, I'm okay. I learned my lesson. Don't go to the ER when you have chest pain because there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so here... This is just another thought. It's just another thought. I mean, I've been in the hospital closer to death before because of my stubbornness. And um, I don't know. I got to tell you, yesterday morning I was a little more scared, um, especially when I was in the car by myself. Um, but then I remembered I wasn't by myself because we know that. We understand that. And that's kind of like the points I'm pulling out of this story. It's a silly story to tell because... All I did was create a thousand dollars of bill for myself, and that's it. Found out nothing else. But uh, so to me, it was useless. Uh, but but it did remind me in the car that I'm not by myself. Although I felt alone for a second or two, I'm not by myself. And so we go on, and we go on. So I got a question for you. We're doing hypothetical right now. And you'll know it's hypothetical when I ask you the question because you're going to know I don't have this. So here's the question. And I want a show of hands. This is something I want an answer from. And it's not going to be silly. not going to make you look dumb or nothing. But who here, if I had the ability to give you in your hand $10 million, who here would like to have that? Your money. Who here? Nobody here wants it at all. Okay. It's your money, $10 million. Okay? All right, there's one stipulation. I'm going to tell you the stipulation. If I give you the $10 million today, you can't wake up the next day. Now who wants the $10 million? <laughs> All right, I'm getting a couple of funny people. All right, 
Here's the thing. Most people answer yes, they'll take the 10 million, but then when they find out the stipulation is they can't wake up the next day, they don't want it. Why? Because they believe their life is worth more than $10 million now. They believe their life is worth more than $10 million. And no, we're all a bunch of poor people here. Some of us may have some good money, but we, that ain't, we're nobody's rich here. $10 million is a lot, and you can do a lot of help for other people with that. But when you find out you're going to lose your life after that, even though we are not afraid to die, I hope none of us are, because we believe in God, we believe in Jesus, we've given our life, we've gotten into that covenant with Christ and God. So we're not worried about that really, but we don't want to take this money and just be gone the next day. Because our life is worth more than $10 million. And so the question that that comes to then is, do you wake up in the morning and feel like you're worth $10 million? The aches and the pains in my body say, no, I'm not, but you know what? I am. You're worth everything for God. You're worth it all for God. Everything you do is for God. And that's what makes it so cool. And that's why I say, I am not one, no one told me what to do. I was a policeman, and yeah, I had sergeants and lieutenants and stuff above me. A lot of them hated having to come and talk to me because they knew what they were going to get, nothing but grief. Especially when I was in homicide because I had more power to give grief. And uh, I love this book. Because this book told me everything. This book gives me what I need. Orders, rules, regulations. Call them what you want. I call it what Freddie was talking about, love. Here, my son, take this book, read it. I'm going to let you start to understand it. And now that you understand it, go live your life right. Go live by my words and see what happens. And everything good has happened for me. Been some ups and downs. I had to go through a real rough time to get here. But it's all been okay. He's been with me the whole time. And I thoroughly believe I'm not ready or slated to go anytime soon yet. I feel I have something more to do. I'm not sure what it is yet, but I do have that feeling. And maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm not a prophet. But I have that feeling. I always have had that feeling. But we've got to get that in our heads. We've got to get that feeling. You need to wake up like you're worth $10 million or more. Every day. I mean, I have gotten into a habit of waking up and you know, pretty much... I talk to him, <laughs> and it's usually a couple of moans and groans in there because I don't walk well, I don't stand up straight all that good, and things like that. But, you know, other than yesterday, my heart doesn't usually hurt, uh, or whatever it was. I don't know. Um, but it, it's the way to be because you're given such a gift that. Calling it $10 million probably still belittles the gift God has given you. You have the, the ability to live forever. If he comes back and you're still walking this earth, your only dying is changing from a carnal or a flesh to a spirit being. And I don't even know if that's death. I think that might just be a change. I don't know. But if you died and you're in the grave, you're resurrected. And I truly believe this, too. And this is me just rambling. This is my thoughts. Not biblical necessarily, but my thoughts. I believe, and before I got into church, I had my thoughts on hell. And if, when people died, they went to hell or heaven or something. And I didn't believe that. And I turned out to be right on that one. <laughs> I believe that when you are resurrected, and if you're in the grave, and you'll know 
that when you are resurrected, you will know at that moment that which resurrection it is, and you will know that you've got victory over the second death. And you will be refreshed, relaxed, relieved. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know if you'll need relief. But I know in our weak minds that we think about right now, that we think with right now, we think, well, I know if I'm in the first or what? If I'm already in the grave, will I know what it is? And do I have to wait and get up and get in a line and, and then go talk to somebody and get my paperwork? We don't know. But that's the kind of silliness that a man would create, some kind of man's order. And we all know what man's order does. Pure chaos. Freddie mentioned it. But I believe that. I believe you'll know. And I believe if you come up in the second one, you're going to know, I got a 50-50 chance here. Lord, I hope I did it right. Maybe you'll say that. Maybe you won't. Depends on who you were, I guess. But we need that attitude. It doesn't matter how bad you hurt. Trust me. It doesn't matter how little money you got. It doesn't matter who's sick, who's not sick, whatever, how the car's running. You got God. You got Christ. And you need to live by that oath, that covenant that you made with him. You got to do that. Matthew 22 and verse 14, he says, Many are called and few are chosen. Well, because you're doing things so different from the rest of the world, rest of the Christian world, I'll call it this time, because you're doing it so different from the rest of the Christian world, I think you got chosen. The question is, do you believe it? See, there's belief in Christ, and then there's belief in what you're doing. Do you believe you were chosen? Because then there's those, again, we've got to go back to how silly people are and how we think. Uh, I don't know, I hate to say I was chosen for sure because, you know, I, I might be making a mistake. Am I being proud and arrogant? Because you know, we're stupid. You were chosen. Because look at the information you have over everybody else. You were chosen. Believe it. John 15, 16, he says, You didn't choose me, I chose you. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? You better. If you read this book, if you're living this life, if you're walking this walk, you've been chosen. There's nothing super special you got left to do. There's no new thing to wear or words to quote or Names to say a certain way and nothing else that is going to change the fact that you're chosen. You're chosen. Get it in your head and accept it. Believe it. Because if you don't, you're going to mess up. Because you're not living in faith. You're not walking the walk. You're just kind of tiptoeing along going, I hope I'm doing this right. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. I'm going to close this out and uh, end it right here in uh, 1 Peter. Um, chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in the time past were not people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but have, but have now, or had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Come on, man. You're a peculiar people a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Oh, if we believe that, are we arrogant? No. You're being truthful. It's not, again, it's not just this little group here. It's all of the people that are doing what he wants. And yeah, there's some people in there that are probably messing it up and not doing it right and maybe won't make it. But as far as I know here, 
you're going to make it. It's up to you to believe it. Rest assured. Freddie was talking about the rest, the great rest of the Sabbath. Well, there's a rest of life too here. And he gives it to you if you'll believe it. Live it and believe it. It's a cakewalk. You know, the last verse of the Bible, the very last verse of the Bible, is Revelation 22, 21. Now, in most versions, it says, the grace of Jesus the Christ be with you, as with all the saints. And all the saints, I believe it is, I'm paraphrasing. However, a couple of versions just say, and to all of us. Well, to me, us in the Bible, being that that was written by John, means saints. The very elect of God, the saints. And that's what you are. Or that's what you are set to be. Believe it, live it, achieve it. I reckon Cain's going to come up and do a song.